in we are live welcome for this weekly live stream on the latest and greatest news in ethereum nd5 for those who don't know me i'm julian and you are on either blocks and on this channel i teach blockchain development and how to find your first blockchain job so as usual first i will talk by myself and we'll do the q a at the end at the end so before we continue I want to do a quick mention to my two courses. First, if you want to become a blockchain developer and make 100k per year like I used to do, you can check out my course Six Figure Blockchain Developer. And if you want to learn how to do flash loan arbitrage, check out my other course on flash loan. So first, we will start with the prices of Ether. So during the past week it went down a little bit uh, we went up to 440 and then so we have this support at 400 and uh, we went below the support and so now we went back just at the support so i mean we had a lot of increase for the past few weeks so i think this is kind of expected that it slowed down a little bit uh but long term i'm still very bullish on ether because of ether 2.0 staking that's going to create a buying pressure on ether and also ether is the default currency of DeFi. so that we have many DeFi investors that take their profit in ether so that's another natural buying pressure for ether so next we're going to see the transaction fee for ethereum so we can see that we are still very high but it start to go down a little bit so a slight improvement but this is still not great so actually there was a proposal to reduce the minor reward by 75 percent eip 2878 and of course miners are not super thrilled by this proposal so certainly that it's going to be rejected so of course this proposal would have improved the situation for the transaction fee but that's maybe a little bit too tough for miners so there is another proposal eip1559 which will change the calculation the reward of miner that will probably be adopted so i think it's a bit tough to have eip1559 and also this other eip pass at the same time uh i in the chat i see some message hi crypto Balrog. hi edgar so there is so another solution to reduce the transaction fee on ethereum is that more DeFi protocol migrate to layer two and i will talk more about this later in this video so that's it for the situation of ethereum in general so now we're going to focus a little bit more on DeFi. So first, the market cap of DeFi, it increased just by 300 million compared to one week ago. So we are slowing down the rate of increase uh, before we used to increase by 1 billion a week. I think that's OK. I mean, we can't go to the moon every week. Uh, it's uh, it's not a disaster. Um, and uh, and then in terms of market cap, so maker is still number one ave is still number two not much change curve uh, uh, number three compound and we still have uniswap uh in nine position but actually in terms of volume of decentralized exchange uniswap is number one um and oh and i i didn't know that yuan finance increased so much uh yeah i mean you can see the two project of andre uh, Curve Finance and Yearn Finance are three and fifth position. So yeah, I mean, this guy is really a superstar in the DeFi world. Like everything he does gets super successful. All right. Um, next, we're gonna see the situation for DeFi tokens. So a lot of positive here, a lot of green. I like this. So yeah, I mean, all the usual governance tokens, they're all going up, synthetics, Aave, uh, curve uh, so that's super positive and of course the big news for the big increase of the week that's uh, your Wi-Fi so the governance protocol of Yon finance so now we say that this is the flipping because it's above the price of Bitcoin 
So here yeah, it's pretty amazing for the people who did some yield farming at the beginning, like the kind of return you can get on that is pretty insane. So next we're gonna see quickly the, the situation on rates. So the rates are a bit down. Uh, for DAI, the highest is still on DYDX, so that's like uh, last week. And USDC actually give pretty good yield at uh, almost 7%, which is pretty sweet. And whoa, and BAT gives you 15% on Aave. Wow, it's pretty good rate. All right, so that's it for the situation of DeFi prices. So now we're going to do the DeFi news so news about specific project so as i was mentioning before one of the solution to solve the problem of high transaction on ethereum is that some DeFi protocol migrate to some layer 2 solution so basically layer 2 solution uh, allow you to do blockchain transaction but outside of the transaction so outside of the blockchain so it's not as safe as layer one which is the ethereum blockchain itself but it's uh, much cheaper so stockware is one of the project that is working on layer two solution and i think that's actually one of the most uh, advanced project on that so dydx the famous decentralized exchange announced they're gonna partner with stockware so let's see what's going to be the benefits for the traders so of course significantly reduce gas and trading fees so i think the way it's going to work is you're going to need probably to do one transaction at the beginning so a normal ethereum transaction that costs a lot of money and then once you've done your transaction the next transaction on this layer 2 chain will be very cheap and when you want to exit this then again, you need to do an expensive transaction. Um, also, you can do trade size that are lower because your transaction fee now, since they are lower, then it makes sense to just trade for 100 or 200 bucks. Currently, it doesn't really make sense to do small trade because your transaction fee is going to be so high. Like if you want to trade, I don't know, 100 bucks and any transaction fee is 50 bucks, this is crazy. Yeah, you're never going to make a profitable trade like this. Uh, you're also going to be able to get uh, more trading pair you're also going to be able to have instant trade settlement so that's very important because currently every time you do a trade you need to wait at least 15 seconds for your transaction to be mined on the blockchain but market condition can change very quickly so that's a big issue for trader so instant trade settlement this is uh, really awesome and yeah so these are the really big benefits for trader I think they plan to release this at the end of the year so uh, we're gonna need to wait a bit for that but yeah it's exactly what I was expecting now we see all these DeFi project trying to uh, to develop solution on layer 2 so this is going to be a temporary solution before Ethereum 2.0 is rolled out um, oh by the way there is a one disadvantage to layer 2 solution is that we lose interoperability so if you are um, on DYDX on a layer 2 and then you want to trade uh, you want to take your funds from DYDX to another protocol first you need to exit this layer 2 with a normal ethereum transaction and after you need to do another ethereum transaction to send to another DeFi protocol so um, it's not only advantages it also had disadvantages unfortunately but this is probably just a temporary solution all right so next news is andre conhe the creator of yun finance and curve finance announced that he is working on a new project y insure finance which is a new insurance project for DeFi. so this is still very early uh, this is just a draft he just briefly said that they're going to be three component insure vault insure vault and claim governance uh, so the idea is that if you're an insurer you send your token for example your usdc to to one vault and if you want to be insured uh, then you're going to be insured by using the liquidity that was provided by by the insurer um and um and i think uh, insurer are not obliged to reimburse you if they estimate that your claim is not valid 
but if they do so, you have a way to punish them by by re withdrawing your fund from the the vault, and so it will um, it will make the operation unprofitable for for the insurer. So uh, there isn't really too much detail. This is still a very early draft, so I would just say a wait and see. But in general, everything that is done by Andre is really high quality. So I mean, I think this is really exciting. This is not the first project for insurance in DeFi there is already open that I explain in a previous video here on my channel but the problem of, of open is that they got hacked really early like a couple of weeks ago they launched and almost right away they got hacked so um, of course they excuse themselves they said they're gonna fix the bugs etc but um, that's never too good for the the trust of the protocol so I this why I'm super bullish uh, about this project. Uh, none of the project of Andre has been hacked at the moment, and he has so much liquidity on Curve Finance and Yun Finance. So I think it's going to be easy for him to attract a lot of liquidity to to this new project. So super excited, but we need to wait and see to have more detail on that. Uh, then next news, so Tether is moving 1 billion USDT uh, from Tron to Ethereum. So that's about 8% of the total supply. So that's super bullish for Ethereum and DeFi projects. There's going to be some extra liquidity that we're going to see in DeFi. Uh, that also show you that Ethereum is the dominant blockchain and all the copycat of Ethereum like Tron are really doomed to fail. Like they don't provide um, anything new they just uh, copy paste so yeah I mean um, they can temporarily steal some value because their transaction fee are lower but in the end the money comes back to Ethereum so it's good news for all of us who are focused on Ethereum and it is this is one more proof that you shouldn't waste too much time with all the blockchain really um, and oh yeah and there is a rumor that apparently the exchange that is behind this is Binance and then next news talking of binance so binance announced that they're going to launch a new feature so a new DeFi saving product so it's one more centralized exchange with trying to get into DeFi by adding a ui for DeFi project so we can get up to about 15 percent apy uh, by saving uh, some uh, return on, on investment on your stable coin. So they have three stable coin where they offer this buy USD, so that's Binance USD, then Tether and uh, USDC. So that's pretty sweet. If, if you're a user of Binance, now you can make some money off your stable coin. Uh, it's pretty sweet, it's pretty uh, positive for DeFi. Next, I found this article on the blog of coinbase that's basically a bunch of advice if you want to list your as 20 token on coinbase so why this is very important because when you list your token on coinbase usually the value of the token goes up like crazy because all of a sudden you have all this liquidity so like this is a huge buying pressure so if you are thinking of launching your DeFi or your blockchain project and you have an ERC20 token, that might be a good idea to know this, uh, to keep this guideline in mind. So of course, uh, yeah, verified source code, so that's easy. Uh, they, they mention audit somewhere. Uh, yeah, external audit, thorough documentation, etc., etc. So it might seem like obvious, but it's good to go through uh, the all this list and make sure you have all the chance to be listed. So next, I wanted to show you this project called DeFi Safety. So that's a project that show you the uh, sort of evaluation of the safety of different DeFi protocol according to different criteria, among which uh, is um, do we have an audit or not? So of course, for protocol that were hacked like uh, BZX or uh, do we have other one that yeah Opin I think was hacked also uh, yeah Yam was uh, at the bug so of course this one <laughs> I, I read uh, Ave yeah seems pretty safe so I mean of course you need to do more research than this but this can give you some some sort of uh, in the early indication of whether something is safe or not 
Um, by the way, this is an example of project that you could build yourself, like a s sort of a uh, like nice little project that can be very useful to the community. It's easy to do, and if you are the creator, it's also uh, a great way to showcase your skill and, and to gain some uh, visibility in DeFi and blockchain. Talking of little cool project you can do yourself, so here is another project called a USD on Ethereum. So that's a dashboard that show you the different USD market cap of the different asset on Ethereum. So for Ethereum, this is 11 billion, then um, of which we have 8 billion of Tether, uh, 1 billion something of USDC, etc, etc. And uh, and yeah, and so they said that soon they're going to show some historical data. So yeah, so that's also typically a kind of project that you can do yourself as a developer. You deploy this either on a digital ocean or uh, even more simple on uh, oh, what's this? Oh, I, for I forgot the name of this project I use all the time. Like, what's this thing where oh Heroku? Yeah, Heroku. Uh, yeah, so an example of simple project you can do so next i want to show you this thread on twitter so these are seven indicators that you can use to evaluate a DeFi project and for each indicator it tells you if this is positive or negative and also it tells you where you can find the indicator yeah hi to the new people in the chat pocket face uh and lucas I will answer to all the questions in the chat at the end, guys. Um, so here, first indicator, total value uh, locked to uh, over fully diluted market cap. So usually for token, we don't have all the token that are in circulation. Some of them are locked. So the more we have in circulation, uh, the better because if that's not the case, then the tokens that are locked, if they are unlocked and they are released on the market all of a sudden, then it can have a huge impact on the market. For example, if this, if this is a governance protocol, then they can outvote the other people. Uh, so that's something that is very important. And you can find this indication on DeFi Pulse uh, or CoinGecko. Uh, then, I mean, I'm not going to do the seven because uh, we're going to need to spend too much time on each of them. But here you have price, uh, market cap on revenue. A percent of uh, of token supply on on exchanges, uh, user growth, uh, unique address growth. So yeah, this we can find it on a Dune Analytics. There are a couple of dashboard, and then uh, yeah, non-speculative usage. So that one, I don't think this indicator really exists. Uh, liquid liquid inflation rate. So this one, I'm not sure to understand it, but they say not uh, rule of thumb none of them and but we can't find it on Messari. huh interesting all right well anyway like if you are interested in evaluating DeFi project like check out this thread um, these are some really good guidelines so next I wanted to to show you uh, this new game if verse so that's basically how could I describe this um, Maybe you guys have heard of Decentraland. So Decentraland is one of the most famous game on Ethereum. That's basically a virtual world where you can own some different assets on Ethereum. And so Ethverse is a little bit like Decentraland, but it's built on top of Minecraft. So I think this is very spot because they didn't waste the time to rebuild all the technology of the game. Uh, all the graphics, they already leveraged everything that was done on Minecraft and what they did that instead of just having the asset being stored in centralized server, they connected this on the Ethereum blockchain. So for players, this is much safer because if Ethverse decide to stop the game at some point, then your assets are still on the blockchain and anybody in the community can decide to run their own version of Ethverse and you do a fork and, and so basically that's a guarantee that anything you own in Ethverse will be really sustainable and long term and nobody can take it away for, from you. So yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, the graphics seems, uh, the image uh, super nice, so it seems super high quality. So yeah, I mean, if, if you like games and you like things like Decentraland, um, the, 
The interest in starting in a game like this from the beginning is that usually the um, everything is really cheap. Like if you want to buy some land or buy some object, that's going to be super cheap. And so what some people do is that they buy a lot of it and then just like wait like six months when the game become popular and then they just uh, resell everything and make a huge profit. So it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. Okay, so next I wanted to talk about how you can get help for your blockchain or DeFi project. So this is the blog of the Ethereum Foundation. And so the Ethereum Foundation has a program of grants so they can give you money if you do a project that um, benefits the community in general. But they cannot give grant to all the applications because they receive way too many. So in some cases, they might say, okay, well, we can give you money, but we can still provide you some sort of support. So, and they give some examples. So for example, um, there's so this guy on Twitter, which is, uh, who is pretty active DeFi dude. He had this uh, idea of creating an uh, archive node. So basically he want to run an Ethereum node in archive mode. That means you can query the state of Ethereum even in the past. So that's very useful if you want to um, for example, show some events. If you want to do it with Infura, you cannot use the free version of Infura. You need to use a paid version of Infura and that can be expensive. So what they did, these guys, they created an archive node that they run on AWS and the Ethereum Foundation didn't give them money, but they gave them AWS credit so that it doesn't cost this guy one cent to run this Ethereum node. Uh, for other projects like Save Dice, this is a hackathon project. They connected this guy to a smart contract auditor who did the audit of their code for free. So they saved a lot of money. Normally, a smart contract audit, like it can easily take you to like 10k or 20k or even more. So if you want some help for your blockchain and DeFi project, Think also of the Ethereum Foundation and they can help you beyond just grants. So that's really good to know. So next news. So now we're going to switch to the news for developers. So MetaMask is changing uh, their license. So MetaMask is an open source project. So they, they need some funding. So the current license is MIT, which is very permissive and that allow anybody to do everything they want. MetaMask has served 4 million users. So it's an extremely popular wallet for Ethereum. That's the most popular by far. So in the future, if your DApp has less than 10,000 monthly active users, no change, you can keep using MetaMask. But if you still, if you start to have more than 10,000 monthly active users, you will need to enter a commercial license with MetaMask. So they don't give detail, but that probably mean that you will have to pay a monthly fee based on usage. So, I mean, I saw some angry people on Twitter, but really uh, that's not really fair. They have provided a lot of value to the Ethereum community. So it's normal that at some point they start to uh, charge people. Um, for the anecdote, I think the founder of Aave suggested that instead they could use some tokenomics in order to uh, to find some funding. So with a system of tokens, uh, they could get some remuneration. We'll see which model they adopt in the end. But if you're just getting started for your blockchain project, you shouldn't be impacted because it's only above 10,000 monthly active users. So next, I want to mention a tool that is super convenient for blockchain developers. So that allow you to do some smart contract monitoring. So I'm going to show you the different screen that you have. So let's say you have a decentralized application and you want to see all the transactions that went through your smart contract. So you can create an account and they'll show you a dashboard where you will see the list of all the transactions with a status showing you if that was a success or not, the network, the date, etc. You can also filter transaction according to different criteria. And you can also do some debugging, gas profiling. So for example, if you want to do some optimization for gas, that's very useful to know how your user 
uh, use your smart contract and which function costs the most gas. So you can use this to have an ID. Also, if you have a lot of fair transaction, you can use their debugger. So I've actually already used the debugger and that's really, really super good. Like it shows you in a very clear way the, the sequence of uh, all the function calls. So this smart contract called this one, this one called this one, etc. And up to the point where you have the failure, you also see um, in which line of Solidity code it corresponds. So that's a very, very valuable tool. Uh, you can use it for free. So yeah, I mean, you guys definitely check this out. All right, so now for the Q&A section. So I'm gonna go over all the, the, the section. So, so, so first Crypto Barrow asked me, hey man, have you been able to make some profit using Furu Combo? Uh, no, I haven't. So I think Furu Combo is an amazing tool, but it's, it's a tool to understand the logic of flash loan to experiment but realistically it's going to be very difficult if you just keep refreshing the price of different exchanges manually and, and try to scramble to do it quick to do the your arbitrage and free combo so you probably need to have a, a system with a, a script that monitors automatically prices so if you're going to do some arbitrage or if you're going to do some liquidation you need to have some script that monitor this on on server and when you script detect an opportunity, automatically it send a transaction to the Ethereum blockchain to do your liquidation or your arbitrage. That's actually what we do in my course on on a unprofitable flash loan. I don't know. Do you have to pay high guys uh, high transaction fee if flash loan transaction fails? Um, yeah, I mean uh, that's exactly the same. If your transaction fail or it succeed, you still have to pay the miner for running your transactions. So, yeah, that's an issue. Like, if your flash loan transaction fail, you you actually can lose like 30, 40, 50 bucks. So currently, the gas prices are pretty high. So that's annoying. Um, in the future, if it comes back to five, ten bucks, that might be a little bit more acceptable. But yes, this is definitely a problem. But normally, if your script works well and you send a transaction fast enough then you flash on should work uh no, 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 lucas hi from sweden uh, hey mega montana hey guys oh we have someone we have uh, a chinese guest who who write in chinese uh, no, no, no. okay so i i can read chinese a little bit let me see if i can translate oh is he say it's all in english the chinese Chinese can understand. Yeah, I mean, dude, like, <laughs> yeah, we all speak English, man. Uh, then Barry says, so a lot of land in decentralized for the same price as real property. Really, man. Wow, I hope you made a lot of money. Like, sounds really exciting. Uh, I should, hi, Julian. I've developed full decentralized tic tac toe game in Ethereum. I would love to collaborate with you. I, I, I don't really know what you mean, but. You can send me an email at julian with an e, julian at itheblocks.com. Uh, okay, we still have some Chinese. Uh, let me see if I can translate this. Oh, this, this is in simplified Chinese. So I'm here in Taiwan. I will use a um, traditional Chinese. So this is a different kind of Chinese. I, I, I'm not sure I can, I can get it. Oh, I, I think it keeps saying, oh, this is all in English. This is all in English uh yeah man <laughs> this is i mean i'm not a i'm not in china i for sure this is in english um what what's the best the best mobile app for DeFi? Mm, i think you mean the best mobile wallet uh, i mean i'm not sure if there is one best but they um i know that the Azure wallet is very popular because it has some built-in integration with different DeFi protocol so that's pretty cool. I know uh, on Dharma, uh, Dharma is another popular one, and I think they actually pay for some of your transaction costs. I don't know how they can finance it. Maybe they aggregate all the transaction at one time in the day. Yeah, so I heard about this about Dharma, so you can check it out. Uh, na, 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 na. Uh, then what is the best layer two solution uh, in your opinion? Mostly focus on faster transaction and cheaper one. Uh, okay, so I haven't looked too much at layer two solution, but I believe that Starkware, the one I mentioned before, I think they are quite advanced. And the fact that DYDX decided to partner with them, 
this is very bullish because DYDX, uh, this is done by guys who are really solid. Uh, they've done a very advanced protocol that is very successful. So I trust these guys. And if they chose Stockware, uh, they've probably done their research. So yeah, I would say Stockware is probably a solid one. Um, I'm buying the course of flash loan. Is it easy to swap on other DEXs other than Uniswap and Kyber? Yeah, I mean, actually, I have a bonus on the course that show you how you can uh, do it with other assets. Um, I don't show how to do it on other DEXs, uh, decentralized exchanges, but yeah, I mean, the, the logic is very similar. The logic is you have with your script, you have to detect. A difference in a price, um, in a difference in price, and then in a spot contract, you buy on one exchange, you sell on the other. So once you know how to do the full process for two exchanges, it's not too difficult to change this to other exchanges. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. My friend, I considering whether to unsubscribe from your channel. But I don't understand. Okay, I think this is the Chinese dude. Yeah, man. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't really know what to tell you. Huh? I, I, I don't, I'm not in China, so I, I don't speak Chinese. Uh, but yeah, I mean, learn some English and, and come back. Come back, buddy. Um, crypto, thanks for the response. Keep up the great content. Thank you. Hello, sir. Uh, how to make money at the Ethereum game developer? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not too much into game. I'm really focused on DeFi. But you can check out what they did with, uh, what's this game? Uh, Crypto Kitties. So basically they make money. Um, they have a marketplace. When you want to sell your, um, your virtual kitty, they take a cut out of this. And another one is regularly they sell some new virtual kitty. And so when you buy this new kitty, all the money goes to the game creator. So two ways, on transaction fee and on new character, new item. Um, why Ethereum transaction fee so high these days? Well, it's because Ethereum is the best blockchain and, um, and DeFi is largely on Ethereum. So yeah, I mean, just um, the demand is, is really high. So I mean, we, we should take it really uh, positively, you know, like there are all these Bitcoin maximalists that say these stupid things. They say, oh, like, Ethereum will not work because the transaction fee are too high, blah, blah, blah. But I mean, this is so stupid. It's like if you see a restaurant, there are too many people and there is a front line with a lot of people waiting and you're saying, oh, oh the, the waiting line is too long. This is bad. No, this is good. It means people want to go to this restaurant. So that's the same thing for Ethereum. It means the demand is really high. So it's just a matter of time before we figure out a solution. But as I said before, DeFi protocol will start to migrate to layer two solutions. So by the end of the year, I predict that by in, th in three, six months, we will start to see a decrease of transaction fee because now DeFi protocol know very well that this is a big issue and people will leave if the transaction fee keep being this high. So in three, six months, we're going to start to migrate to layer two for some DeFi protocol and it's going to reduce the transaction fee a lot. Uh, uh, any thought on ZZZ Finance? I haven't looked at this protocol, Steven. Uh, Edgar asked me, Julian, please create a tutorial on how to make an Ethereum wallet. Um, yeah, I can have a look at it. Um, that's one of the projects in Six Figure Blockchain Developer, one of my course that I, I mentioned at the beginning. You, you'll find the link in the chat. Um, oh yes, for, for people who don't know about my two course, so here to become a blockchain developer and the other one to create flash loan. Um, then have you checked out the monolith card? No, I don't know about this project. I guess this is a game. Oh, I don't know about that one. Do Ethereum gambling game qualify as DeFi? No, uh, no gambling qualify as gambling. So gambling is really strong on Tron and on EOS. Uh, not so much on DeFi. Um, yeah, I mean, that's gambling. That's uh, nothing nothing special. Like, I, I don't really like the, the sketchy aspect of, of gambling in general. And I'm happy that this is not really the focus of Ethereum. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the big niche really is DeFi. And DeFi is 
the thing that will make Ethereum grow like 100, 1,000 times. Your follower from Saudi Arabia. I know you can read my name, Wazel name. Hi, Wazel. Um, hello, can we do multiple swap in Uniswap in one transaction? Yeah, you can. That's actually what makes Uniswap so amazing. So um, when you trade with Uniswap by using the, the router smart contract, you actually specify a, a path. So if you want to go from uh, token A to token B to token C, if there is no market between token, token A and C, but there, there is a market between A and B and B and C, then you specify a path. And so that's how you can do a, a complex trade. I'm, I'm not sure if that was what you were asking, or maybe you were asking, maybe you want to do from A to B, and maybe from D from D to F or like two totally unrelated transaction. If that's what you're asking, no, we can't do this. Actually, I was I was thinking of maybe creating a tutorial on this. Uh, in any case, last week I released a tutorial on Uniswap V2 on my channel, so check it out because a lot of people uh, told me that was great, that was very useful. Lex say true about the gas fee look at what happened when yam hit people still pay 300 500 way easy yeah that's insane like yeah i mean at this level you have to trade like at least twenty thousand us or something like this otherwise this is not worth it uh, all right thanks man yeah no problem ashwin steven say zzz got to over 1000 in just a little over a week it's trying to be a better yen finance oh interesting okay well i'll check it out Yes, like I mean, we are like Yuan Finance, then we are like the Yuan Finance II uh, from China. Now we have ZZZ. I mean, seems like people are, are going crazy over Yuan Finance. That's uh, that's cool. Uh, Alex got it this week. Still have to use it in the raw. Did it? Uh, right. Um, okay, Alex. Uh, did. I always have a question in my mind between what is the difference between the second and first edition of Uniswap? Uh, so there's a couple of difference. So first, before, in the first version of Uniswap, they were using Ether. So you had like, for example, uh, a pair of, uh, I don't know, an ERC20 token against Ether. So now they use Wrap Ether instead of Ether. And second, now you can have market with two different ERC20 token. So for example, I don't know, um, USDC versus uh, uh, versus a COMP token, for example. Also now you can do this complex trade with a path, as I mentioned before, like from A to B, uh, B to C, etc. Uh, and I think in terms of gas fee, I think it's also improved and there are also some other other changes uh, but check out my video on uniswap v2 uh, but, but do, you don't you don't have to care about uniswap v1 because all the liquidity has been moved to a uniswap v2 uh, crypto balrog is asking non-blockchain question can you share a spotify playlist for the rest of us blockchain like what music <laughs> how okay like how can i find like some blockchain music like you mean like some techno <laughs> I don't know like I like to work with uh, some jazz like some some chill stuff yeah like something something without lyrics because if there are some lyrics like I, I just can't really focus uh, all right guys well I think we're running out of question here um, yeah that's it okay so guys thanks for following and if you're interested uh in becoming a blockchain developer check out my course six figure blockchain developer if you want to learn how to create flash loan check out the other course profitable flash loan and i'll see you for my next video on my channel bye guys